at the community center in Brasov with Andrea, who she's the coordinator for this amazing activity that happened ad hoc. It just happened, you know, overnight. There was nothing when they arrived here, and she's uh, the main coordinator that helped all these groups: the, the civil society, the municipality, the governmental lines, the civil society, come together to help the refugees from Ukraine. So, Andrea, I want I want you to like tell me a bit. Uh, not necessarily how your day goes by because obviously every day now looks the same uh, but what is some of the things that you do here in helping create such an amazing um, coordinate such an amazing team or group of people in helping other people thank you first of all for all your kind words of, and for you being here actually here we make life happen we try to bring a drop of normal life into uh, the days of the people that uh, cross uh, by uh, Katya Center. We are helping them with food, with accommodation, with laptops, laptops for uh, the school. Now we are sharing our own laptops for, for the kids that have uh, classes in Ukrainian. We do our best to make them feel at home, even they are so far away from home. Definitely, and talking about laptops, and I also saw you helping in the kitchen and helping with the meals. This is wonderful, and all the operations I've seen so far here—it's it's just incredible how a, a small community of entrepreneurs. Uh, and I'm so grateful for our partner here at Pro Afacher for bringing us here in Brasov to see the reality what is here. Because sometimes, like just watching television, it kind of like seems like a movie, you exactly. know. And I'm not obviously a professional journalist. <laughs> I'm part of the civil society, I'm part in the nonprofit world, I do work on, on, on prevention, but I want to ask you, Andrea, you're talking about laptops, about food, and I know like the society already did great things by you know exactly. coming with your own laptops, but what are some of the, the needs from now on? Like how can we do, what can we do to help more? Because this is not a, unfortunately, it's not a temporary problem. Exactly. These people will have to have a life again, and mm -hmm. while you, beautiful is put together the fact that here life restarts we want to continue that flame somehow and what we can do as NGOs in the United States as companies as entrepreneurs to help the people here at this center in particular to help more refugees well I want to ask you to make an exercise imagine that in the morning you wake up you put a backpack and you go. And after this, think what you need to restart your life in a new city where you don't know nobody with only three clothes that you carry with you. So starting from money to rent houses, to beds, washing machines, laptops, TVs, pens, notebooks to go to school, everything is needed because these people now start now under zero zero it's the house that you are born in that has the basic needs to continue your life but they don't have even those now they are here they have a safe place where to stay but life in a hotel isn't normal life life in a refugee center isn't normal life normal life means that you have your own home that you lock and unlock every day. Normal life means that you can cook a meal, that you can watch TV in the evening, that you can make a shower, you can do homeworks. This is normal life. So imagine this, make this exercise and after this think, what would I need? I think this is the best way that I can answer your, your question right now. I even don't go further to imagine that you have a chronic disease, that you have diabetes, and you leave from home with medicines for one week, and you need medicines to continue your life, maybe you need some surgical procedures. Life happens. It's not like, okay, we're started, I'm not sick anymore, I don't go to school anymore, and all this. Well, thank you so much, Andrea. It's, it's amazing. I want to, you know, not necessarily like congratulate you, but like telling you that what you do here, it's valuable. Thank you, you so much. You as a person and also helping others do the same and duplicating these methods. I talked with 
volunteers here. I talk with entrepreneurs who have helped. I talk with, I saw the operation and it's amazing. And I think this center here, the community center at Katia can be a, a role model for creating other centers because I know, and I was talking with some of your people here, it's the need, it's not only like here in Brasov, but it's all the way from Ukraine to Brasov in, in the entire Romania and in other countries as well. So hopefully this center that you guys created can serve as a role model to others. Uh, and that's that's what we are hoping for to bring further to to the society to understand what you're doing. So thank you, thank you, thank so, you much. so much, and thank you for multiplying the good because I think that each and every one of us, with the little or more that we can bring to this to everyday life, is change. And multiplying good, it's all the time the best reward that every day can give us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you.